Spain, one of the hottest countries in Europe and not usually known for snow or its frozen lakes. In the wintry months in the north, by the Picos de Europa, which translates to the peaks of Europe, you may see exactly that. Like many, I love a Harry Bowl too. It's what's fueled me for most of this trip. I still remember as a kid, my mum always used to say your teeth will fall out if you eat too many. That's where Ratancito Perez would come in and take the tooth from under your pillow, according to Spanish folklore. It does seem really funny to me though that they use a fictional mouse instead of the westernized tooth fairy. Back to the trip. I've chosen to go to Spain because it's pretty much the only place in Europe to have good weather in the early months. Nearly all of the high mountain passes in the Alps, so France, Switzerland and Italy, are closed to road traffic outside of summer. This is because of snow, ice and the dangerous conditions being a risk to public safety. So on the destination shore, what region do I go to? And more importantly, how do I get there? Ordinarily, I'd get the Eurotunnel to Calais and take a couple of days to drive through France towards Spain. On this occasion, I decided to get a ferry as it's a bit different and takes away some of the strain of the long motorway driving. Frustratingly though, outside of the summer months, there's only one crossing to northern Spain, which goes from Portsmouth and takes two nights rather than one. Let's give it a go. Never actually driven in Spain, but I've been told the mountain passes are pretty quiet, which is always nice. As I fill up 55 litres of Shell V power for the journey to Portsmouth, I spot a really nice touch that wasn't visible to me before. All in the details, eh? 290 miles to empty, let's head down to the south coast. After an entirely random search at security and a lengthy queue to get on the ship, me and the Amira have safely boarded. Have to take everything out of the car though, not allowed down to the bottom deck where they're stored for the whole crossing. Mitsubishi Evo 9, nice. I'm sure we'll be having some fun on those Spanish roads. That's pretty much a rally car. After checking in, I've got the paper key and the correct room number. I was pretty surprised at the size of the cabin. Four beds in this tiny space? Sardines spring to mind. Oh, that's Ryan. He's coming with us in his new Mark V Toyota Supra. Donuts, anyone? Like me, he's also quite the petrol head. It's actually the second Supra that he's owned. Previously, it was with the ZF automatic gearbox. His new one, like my Lotus, is a Manuel. Oh, please forgive that Spanish pun. <laughs> if you just close your eyes, you might hear a BMW 3 litre six cylinder. He's also responsible for this in my trailer. So we're here on deck, a bit cold as you can see. Okay, sorry, that wind noise was a bit much, but it's what I had to go through to get some air. That's somewhere along the west coast of France in the background, and I think the car is parked down there too. And they weren't joking when they said the Bay of Biscay is really rough. You've got the North Atlantic Ocean carrying the wind from America that goes across, gathering pace on its way to Europe. All that usually leads to a choppy crossing with the potential for big waves. At least the sun is out though, and despite the heavy wind, it's quite peaceful. Oh, I wouldn't fancy walking down these stairs after a few bevies. Okay, see you later. So after one long day and two long nights, we've arrived in España. Never been so happy to be on land. I was speaking to a few people who sound like they've done that journey umpteen times and they said that was the smoothest it's ever been. Last night I was sick as a dog, didn't want to eat anything, so happy to be uh, on land. Lovely weather, not a cloud in the sky. And uh, on to Rathing. We're going to get quite a few Spanish accents this trip, so that's a start. So obviously got the directions wrong and ended up at the training ground. Luckily, it's only 10 minutes down the road. Founded in 1913, Racing Club Santander play at Estadio Sardinero and have done since 1988. A few former players you might know, Luis Garcia after his time at Atletico Madrid, Yossi Benayoun before his move to West Ham, and now Argentina World Cup winning manager Lionel Scaloni before his move from the same club. Cool fact, Santander were the first club in Spain to have a shirt sponsor, Teca. You might remember them for these amazing Real Madrid kits, Leyendas. 
Next stop is only a 20 minute drive from the port, Mirador de Peña Caparga, which is a scenic viewpoint that I found that overlooks the Bay of Santander. It's over 1800 feet above sea level at its highest point, and you've also got the Pasiegos Mountains on the other side too. It's beautiful. Despite the spectacular views, we just can't stop too long. Got a lot of driving to do and there's not a huge amount of time to take it all in. <laughs> Ryan lighting up his rear tires again. Shock! Now we're headed away from the bay, inland, towards the Picos de Europa. It suddenly hit me how similar our cars were. And we really didn't plan it. We both come in small, rear wheel drive, two seater sports cars with three pedals. Very different takes on that shore. My V6 engine is in the middle, just behind me, and has a supercharger bolted to it and his straight six is right at the front and turbocharged. Either way, this is gonna be a lot of fun. And don't ask me why people are walking on the side of the road at this altitude. After a lovely set of hairpins on the way up, we stop off at Cahia Reservoir for a bit of rest. Not sure what it is about water that gives such a sense of tranquility. Anyway, we move. You join me at the top of San Glorio. Wow. Looks like we've made a new friend. I'm not hugely into bikes, but his BMW looks pretty serious. This mountain pass is over 1,600 meters above sea level. That's well over twice the size of the biggest pass in the UK. And I love this hairpin at the top. This isn't even the highest point we're reaching today. Anyway, Ryan, leave the old deer alone. Let's get a move on. Speaking of animals, San Glorio is also a wildlife corridor for the Iberian brown bear which is listed as an endangered species with less than 200 of them estimated left in the wild. Hola, Saul. No, 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 this is better. And yeah, I wasn't wrong. BMW S1000RR, mental. I told you, I think we need a minute. Up to now, I think this might be the best view I've ever seen. Just put in Mirador, Puerto Ventana into your sat nav if you're anywhere near northern Spain because it is simply breathtaking. It's also pretty cold up here which brought Ryan back to the car. Funny how my attempt to bring him back almost led me to fall over twice. What you're seeing in the background is another natural park. Las Ubiñas La Mesa, which was designated a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve in 2012. This image from Google Maps also shows how much beauty snow brings to the landscape. Look how different this valley looks in the summer. Onwards and upwards, they say. I take a long look in my rear view mirror as I take in the last view of this incredible landscape. I'm then snapped out of it as soon as I see a black Supra accelerate away in my peripheral vision. I do love the variation of roads here in Spain. You have winding mountain roads with cliffside views that you're seeing here, and then almost out of the blue, you get straight lines in between the valleys that are absolutely deserted. I hope there's a toilet at the top. <laughs> I don't think we're going to find one, Ryan. You join me at one of the highest points in Spain, Los Portolinos. Just under 2,000 meters above sea level. Got the wind turbines there in the background. Stunning scene, you can see how far up we've come. You see the winding ro roads even. I think Ryan's car might be even dirtier than mine somehow. <laughs> might not have looked like it, but that was a near miss. This is one of the last roads we're driving before we leave Northern Spain and arrive at one of the highlights of the trip. Tomorrow is going to be epic. So it's Portugal that we're driving through tomorrow. Just before we cross the border and rest for the night, we catch the sunset at Encoros dos Conchas, taking in the last moment of light fading away. I think that translates as a reservoir with two shells. And we're off. All action today. Okay, 
the Supra might be a bit quicker. This car even sounds good when you miss a gear. So just entering the Park Natural de Alval. Beautiful scenery. Let's see how we get on. Track mode activated. And it's for good reason too, as you'll soon find out as we discover this hut in the middle of this beautiful valley. Again, absolutely deserted. My turn first. I don't know what it is about this car with this backdrop, but it looks absolutely majestic. <laughs> Evidently very excited to show you his pride and joy. Hi guys, this is the uh, Mark V Supra. Let's see what I got in here. Ooh, clear MST air intake. Fits bits titanium charge pipe. Excuse me. Whiz bits, not fits bits. No, no, roll around there. there. Get out. There. What an angry little thing. The Supra leads away to the summit. Oh, what a road. And here we are at what I think is the top of the N304. You can see the valley where we've been for the last hour, our little playground. One thing that's fascinating about this view are the teeth looking like concrete blocks that border the road for miles on end. They look really cool. I'm not sure how they'd fare compared to a crash barrier in a collision, but they're definitely more appealing on the eye. So let's not worry about that. The Lotus has also fared pretty well and up to now has not missed a beat. Okay, so that wasn't the top, but Monjim Jibasto, which houses the N304, is an absolute gem. Next clip, you can see the focus. I even had to pause the music. Back in the second, it's tight turn. Despite my best attempts at a spectacular end in Portugal, at the Serra da Estrela, the highest mountain range in mainland Portugal, and a two hour drive through the gripping N222, as you saw in my last clip, the hype was building. So after all that anticipation, <laughs> the road's closed. A uh, bit of a language barrier, but it seems to be either the quality of the tarmac or ice. So have to see if we can find another way around. So yeah, we thought we found a third way up, but as you can see here, it's closed as well. So you can just see here, there's a map with the red bit. I assume Fischado means closed, before I translate anyway. So, until next time, we'll have to make sure that we make up for it tomorrow. One of my favourite parts at the start of this trip was where we found ourselves at the end of the first day, just after San Glorio, in Valse de Riaño. It's very reminiscent of Nordic scenery and it's one of those roads that you just want to cruise and take in your surroundings, rather than floor it towards the horizon. The second part of my trip will follow in just under two weeks as I head further towards the southern coast of Spain. Please do like and share this video if you enjoyed the watch as it really does help me put my content out to a wider audience. This might even be what brought you to my channel in the first place. I'm sure part two of my adventure will be even more fun. It does get a fair bit warmer. If you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button and watch my first two videos which show the very start of my journey that led me to Spain.